Hey, Rail fans, how's it going? You are tuning into another episode of Trains with Shane. And our guest today is something you guys may have seen on the channel before. This is an old Atlas GP7 in Kansas City Southern Colors. I picked this unit up at the local train show here, oh, probably about a year and a half or so ago from an estate sale that was being uh, liquidated at the train show. I've purchased locomotives from there several times and it's where I got the Fairbanks Morse unit from. And this unit, if you remember, back when we took a look at it on the Will It Run episode, it runs fine. Forward, back, very smooth, very quiet, good unit. I recently did a little tune-up on it. I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not, but as you can see, the wheels are nice and clean and shiny. So you're going to ask yourself, Shane, why do we have this unit out today? Well, I was talking with a friend of mine, and we were talking about DCC and how expensive it was. Even for units that are DCC ready, you're still in... $100 if you want to get a low sound drop-in or something, and then you have to run speakers and stuff. I have heard that some of the newest Atlas DCC Ready stuff comes with a speaker installed in it, and I think the new Broadway Limited Stealth series also comes with a speaker built in. I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to look at any of those yet. So when I'm on eBay looking for used junk for the channel, I... Sometimes we'll see DCC sound decoders that are like no no brand name or anything like that. They're not Loc Sound, they're not TCS, they're not Tsunami. And they're not very expensive and they come with the speaker built in. So I thought to myself, well, why don't I just pick one of these up and see if they're garbage or if they're a good budget option. So that's what we did. We got on eBay. We picked up a unit that came in a padded envelope and it came exactly as you see it here. The fanciest of packaging. Um, I haven't even looked at this thing yet. I may have to break out, break out the hobby knife and get into it here. Try to not cut my finger open like that. We're doing well. Okay. Let's see if that's got it. All right. Here's our business right here. As you can see, it's a... A DCC decoder, there's our logic chip there. Let me get you guys zoomed in and get it right up in your teeth. There's our logic chip. Diodes and resistors. LED number one as labeled. Guessing that is LED two on the top. And as you can see, we've got our speaker planted right on to the board here. And there's our contact pads. So this thing is actually going to sit like this in the locomotive. The plan, or the theory, I guess, behind this is it comes as an all-in-one unit. So you don't have to machine anything in your locomotive to make it work. So let's set this aside. Here's our instructions, I'm assuming. Torn off printed half sheet of paper with instructions. Asking us to test it before we try to program any CVs. Our function table. CV maps. And 
and it looks like some spaces that it wants us to install capped on tape. That could be a little bit of a problem because I don't have any capped on tape because I've never installed a DCC decoder before. So what that means is I'm going to have to get some scotch tape to use temporarily for testing. So let me run and get that and I will be right back. All right, guys, we've got generic scotch magic tape. It's not ideal, but it should provide enough electrical isolation for us to test this thing and find out if it works. If it does, I'll remove it and replace it with some capped on tape. So we're gonna have to get the, the shell off of this unit. I'm gonna borrow a lid from our Bachman here. You guys have never seen this done before, pay attention. So, and you need to be delicate with this, don't ham fist this. You see the front pilot here on the bottom of the steps? You wanna take that and you wanna sit that on the edge of the box here. So basically we're suspended like this. You wanna take that, you don't wanna slam this I'm going to tap it a couple times, and as you can see, our chassis is starting to come loose from the shell. Sometimes I have to drop both ends, so let's put this thing in the other way. Just using my finger to steady it. As you can see, we've come out a little bit on the bottom too. You should just be able to wiggle this right out of here. On some units, you don't even have to do that. It'll just pull right out. But on some of these, it's kind of tight. Here's our works. Get rid of our box lid here. And without even so much as a jump cut in editing, we're going to deploy our cradle. Find my Phillips head screwdriver right here. Find my small flat blade. Because as Adam Savage will tell you, anything can be a hammer and most things can be a pry bar. So we're going to use our flathead screwdriver as a pry bar. Get in frame here. We don't have to take these all the way out. We can just loosen them and then get in here. The trucks might fall out while we're doing this. And you just want to gently pry apart here. Our objective is to spread this open enough to be able to wiggle this board out. loosening the screws yet again. You can take these all the way out. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, we're spread apart. Let's see if we can sneak this board out of here. Nope, not yet. We may have to go all the way apart with it. Like I said, our trucks will probably drop out of here too at some point. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take them out, get my thumbs out of the way. I'm gonna take the trucks out and set them aside. I'm gonna leave the tank on because I wanna keep our contact strips in place and it'll kinda help jig this whole thing together. Still no joy. A little more. Probably would have taken me less time to just blast the whole thing apart. All right, I think we've got what we need here. Okay, 
here's our board. I'm going to set our unit here down. I'm going to keep our board in the same orientation here, and the reason for that is we're going to bring our new board over and compare. Looks like our contact pads are roughly in the same orientation. We flip over. And it looks like our motor contacts here and here. The um, only difference is it's two solder blobs as opposed to solid, I'm guessing that's copper pads. So we're in the correct orientation to just go ahead and slip this into our chassis in theory. Looks like one of our hex nuts came out. That's fine. Let me reposition the camera a little bit here, guys, if I can. Okay, we're going to go back to our instructions and see where it advised us to put the cap on tape. Looks like it wants it underneath the speaker. And... Right there, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Want us to wrap the tape around the inside right here. Okay, that does make sense. Um, maybe what it's trying to avoid, although I don't know why, is to keep the motor leads from pushing out and shorten against the the side of the chassis. Um, our tape is too wide to accomplish that. So let's see if we can perform some surgery on it. Got a piece of tape here. I'm just going to try to split it. I probably could have made that real easy and just cut it that way. See, and that's why you do these things, so you can get your get your methodology together. I'll take that and I'm going to sneak this up the side here. How fancy is this? And as a reminder, guys, I'm going to go back and redo this with capped on tape, but I'm going to have to probably order some online. I don't know where you'd get that. This Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore. Hit a thumbs up button if you guys remember and loved Radio Shack. Oh, that piece is too thick. That's what she said. Not to me, she didn't. And guys, don't blow me up in the comments and tell me you should have used Kapton tape. I've told you four times I'm going to go back and put Kapton tape in here. And then it wants a piece isolating the worm assembly here. All right, close enough for the woman we date, so let's try to sneak our board in here. We may have to, let's see, where's my flathead? Might have to play with our 
leads here to make sure we get them stuck underneath the board. ish. I just have to see if we can squeeze it together. I'm concerned about the thickness of those contact pads. Almost like they don't want to squeeze in there. Make sure we're not messing up our motor cage here. Okay, there's one side. There we go. I think we might have been partially hung up on our spacers here. Okie dokie. I'm gonna put our hex nut back in this side. counterclockwise to make sure we get the, the, the threads seated in right. That looks wonky. What's going on here? Oops. Is this board too wide? If you notice, the PCB is hard up against the edges here, so that's not getting any slimmer. And that is dangerously close. So let's do this. Let's back our screw out a little bit. On that end, we need to feed our trucks in anyway. And those aren't going to go in. If that ran all the way down. It's not impossible to bend this casting, but I don't think we did. No, it's out on both sides. As you can see, we are hard up against the edges of this. So, we might just try to run it and see what happens. Because honestly, the worst thing that happens is we smoke this cheap decoder. If that needs to go forward a mill or two. If you look, there's cutouts in that board, but there's only, I don't know, a millimeter if that much in it to try to slide it forward. I mean, we're gonna try anyway. Ah! 
No, nope, she ain't going. That's where she lives. Go digital, it'll be a quick, easy install. Just drops right in. Whoops, I meant to do that. She doesn't budge. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's graduated inward. So, so that's just where it lives. Alrighty, and honestly, this is a DCC friendly device, but it's not really DCC ready. Let me see if I can find the rear truck that I just dropped on the ground. It has disappeared. All right, guys, give me a minute. Let me go retrieve that. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, sorry I skipped ahead a little bit. I just slammed it back together. You guys have seen me do it. Uh, we've got our NCE power cab here ready to go. Let's turn on track power. <laughs> you guys watch for smoke. I'll bet there's gonna be smoke. Here's something. I see a headlight. Let's get on cab address three. We've got a bell. I don't believe it, we've got sound. Headlight? Direction change headlight? Yes. Do we have a, now let's see if the motor even works. We didn't set any voltage values or anything. Well, I'll be. We hit the direction change button, it coasts to a stop. Weights change directions. Oh, do it again. That's pretty cool. Notice how when you hit the horn, the bell gets washed out or it stops playing it. probably a limitation of the controller. Let's see if we can throttle up, get our prime mover sound, and keep the bell on.
throttle, all of it. I'm gonna get my head down here and listen. It's not very loud. It'll probably be even less loud with the shell on. It doesn't have much of an enclosure. I wonder if there's a volume CV we can tweak. Let's check the documentation that they gave us. Let's see. Start voltage, acceleration, deceleration, top voltage, basic configuration, CV21. Consist, horn type, bell type, horn volume, dynamic brake volume, safety engine cooling fan volume, coupling volume. Where's my engine volume? There's speed table options here. Air pump, dynamic brake volume, brake screw, diesel rumble volume, CV55. Oh, I just heard an air pump or compressor. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to need to play with these CV values. I will probably do that on JMRI Decoder Pro. I'd like the prime mover volume to be a little bit higher. Our slow speed crawl sure is good though. There's no momentum built into it. I don't even know if this thing supports that. Talk about slow speed crawl. Look at that. I could probably stand to lube this thing up a little bit. It's a tiny bit dry. Let's go up one more to 20. Let's go up a little bit more. I'm tired of crawling. Wow. Honestly, guys, it's pretty good. Only thing I wish I had was a little bit more volume out of the prime mover. Sweet. I didn't think we were going to have a winner, guys. Um, like I said, I found this off eBay. And I will put a link to the seller's store. Let me... Let me turn off track power here. So I don't have to yell at you guys. I will put a link to the seller's store, eBay store, in my description of this video. They didn't ask me to, to do this video or anything. They don't even know that I'm doing this video. I'm just doing it because I bought some stuff and wanted to see if it worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on this thing. this will fit up in here anymore maybe too wide that's what she said Oops. I'll 
also it helps if you put it in the right way. Imagine that. It's not fitting too well. That's probably on me, and I am probably failing it, putting this thing back together. Anyway, I'll screw with that off camera. So, yeah, my first DCC sound install with a cheap, generic, no-name eBay encoder. We're going to keep our light board handy just in case that, that thing decides it wants to not work one of these days. So I want to thank you for joining me on another episode of Trains with Shane. And I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon.